welcome to this Math Media's video on inverse trig functions. And to start with, let's take a look at setting up the inversion. But before we begin, we need to remember that the sine, cos and tan graphs are not one-to-one -one functions. They are many-to-one functions. And as a result, we have a set of x values which give back the same result. For example, sine of 45 degrees is equal to sine of 135 degrees, which is equal to sine of 405 degrees. Now a function can only have an inverse if it's a one-to-one -one function. And as a result, we'll need to restrict the domain, the range of values of x, of each original trig graph to be one to one. So if we start with sine x here, so for sine x, well, for the domain here, this is restricted to minus pi over two, two pi over two. Okay, so two, so minus pi over two, two pi over two. Okay. And then for the range, well, sine x is between minus one and one. Okay. So minus one, two, one. For cos x, well, the domain here is restricted from zero to pi. So we just know this here. And minus one for the range here up to one. And finally for tan x here, well, the domain is restricted to minus pi over two to pi over two. So if we write that down here, and just quickly note here that this is a strict inequality, unlike sine x and cos x. Okay, and for the range of tan x, well, this is unrestricted. And if we give the graph here for sine x and its inverse, and then cos x and the inverse, and tan x, and finally the inverse of tan x, what we get is something that looks like this. So our first graph here, and if we just clear the ink, just so we can see this clearly, this is for sine x and its inverse, which is denoted with this dashed line here. So in blue here, we have sine x, okay? And this dotted line here, this purple dotted line, that's arc sine of x, okay? So that's arc sine of x. For cos x, well, we have this here now. So the green curve here is cos x, this is cos x, and then this purple dashed line here, this is arc cos x. Okay, and finally, for tan x here, and its inverse graph, well, this is the red curve then, for tan x, and this purple dashed line is arc tan x. Okay, so that's arc tan x. Okay. So that gives us everything we need there for setting up the inversion. If we just make a quick note here, well, inverse trig functions are not the same as the reciprocal trig functions. So it's important to note here that, for example, sine inverse, so sine inverse of x, is not equal to 1 over sine x. Okay, it's important to note. And that applies for cosine and tangent. So cos inverse of x is not equal to one over cos x. And finally, tan inverse of x is not equal to one over tan x. Okay, so that's just a quick note there for inverse trig functions. And finally, let's take a look then at inverse representation in graphical form. Now you might have noticed already that the inverse function is the original function reflected in the line y equals x. So this is reflected in the line y equals x. And this is true for any inverse function. But this is probably a good time to mention it now anyway. So this is true when you're sketching your trig functions. Okay, so remember this is just reflected simply in the line y equals x. So that gives us everything we need there for inverse representation in graphical form. And that concludes this Mass Media video on inverse trig functions.